everybody, and welcome to Libromancy, a podcast about the magic of books. I'm Josh, and today I'm going to be talking about Clean Sweep by Alona Andrews. So let's sweep up the magic of books. Now, first off, like always, this was a good, fun book. It's a little bit quicker. It's a little bit smaller than some of the other ones I've read recently, but it is great. So I want to just tell you a little bit about this. It's an urban fantasy kind of book, but... I felt like it it was pretty good urban fantasy. I didn't feel like the romance was way too contrived because I've read some where the first book is like, now you hate each other, now you like each other, now you're going to go be, now you both want each other really bad. And that was way too quick for anything, right? Uh, this was an interesting book because as I was reading up on it, I learned that it was actually posted one chapter at a time onto their website, kind of like in a web serial form. And then when they were done, they compiled it and pushed it out. And so in the book, there's actually some artwork of some characters, which was kind of cool. It really helped, like, paint a firm picture of what they looked like and, like, what certain things were. But on the whole, most of it's left to your imagination, and it's just fine. Very good. So I like that the plot didn't get overtaken by, like, the romance, which can sometimes happen in urban fantasy. So... I thought that was good. Also, Alona Andrews is an author duo, a husband and wife duo that write books together, and they've written at least three or four other series, from the Kate Daniels to The Edge, and then Hidden Legacy at the very least. And those ones were really good. The ones I've read, I've enjoyed them. So they're a pretty good companionship for writing. Now, this book is not going to blow your mind. It's not going to wow you with its incredible prose, but I don't think those are negatives for this book. For what this book is attempting to accomplish, I think it does it very well. So let me uh, give you a little bit about kind of just the basics of the plot beforehand, and then we'll kind of dive into it. So Dina is an innkeeper, and that's capitalized with magic, and you know, who knows why, but it is. And she is... Things like animals are starting to die in her neighborhood, being attacked, and so she has to get help to stop them and defend her in. It's a short little book. It fulfills it really well while leaving it open for more. Just great. You know, I really think she really nailed, obviously, it's an urban fantasy book, so she really nailed the fact that it felt like Earth uh, for the most part. The plot really kept it going, and, you know, there's just enough intrigue where not everything's answered, but enough's answered that I'm satisfied with it. So I think we're going to have to move into our spoiler section and just start talking about spoilers. Now, I really enjoyed kind of the magic system that she's built and all the other things that are played out. So it is a little bit cliche, and I probably should have mentioned this earlier, but yes, it is a little cliche with the vampires, the werewolves. They're both kind of going for the main girl, but... They definitely don't start out that way, and it was very interesting the way it happened. So Dina is an innkeeper, and when I say innkeeper, she's more of like an interplanetary innkeeper, where she has an inn, and because of that, she has this magic connection to the inn, where she can, her inn is almost alive, it's kind of got like this half-sentience kind of thing going, and so she can basically do whatever she wants on her land. Oh, I need a pit dug? Bam, there's a pit. You just, you know, the grass, reach out and grab something? Done. I want to arrange my building so it looks different? Bam, it's done. So it's a very unique and purposeful take on the magic system. You know, as soon as she's past that barrier, she has no ability. She has no magic. Well, she's got her own you know, physical ability, obviously, but she is cut off from that magic and that ability. One of the things that I really, really liked was uh, she's giving one of the werewolf a room to stay for the night. And he's like, wait wait a minute, this room faces this way. And she's like, yeah, but I wanted it to have this other view. And he's like, you could do that? And she's like, yeah, in my, in physics are more of a a a heady suggestion. And so just even that she's able to do kind of crazy things, like change the views or the facings of the house without actually changing how the house looks. Pretty cool. Very much enjoyed it. Now, let's talk a little bit about the werewolves and the vampires. Let's talk about the werewolves first. Uh, werewolf, our main character, Sean, is a werewolf, and he is what is known as an, an alpha strain werewolf. 
because werewolves and vampires do not originate from planet Earth. They come from other planets in the space, right? I don't know exactly where. They did not give me a map full of space and say exactly where everyone's from. But basically, there were werewolves, there's this planet of people... They were in a fight with some with the, a split off rogue group of their own, so they created werewolves to fight against them. Then the other side created like were cats to fight against them, so they, they recreated a better, stronger strain of, of werewolves. And you know, and then they fought and won. And now the werewolves have kind of spread out through the galaxy. Now Sean knows he's a werewolf, but he didn't know any of this other stuff that he was from another planet, that he was like genetically bred and stuff for this. Because it just was passed down to him through his father. So when he learns about it, because Dina, who's been in the innkeeper business with her whole life, tells him, she's like, he's like, what? I got to go make a call. And so he goes over, he calls his dad, and he's like, what the heck, dad? Why, why didn't you tell me this? I didn't think you needed to know yet. I'm an adult. I'm like living on my own. Like I was in the army. Like you never told me any of this. It's just super funny from my point of view. Obviously, I could see that it would be very dramatic for, like, an actual person, but it was pretty funny. Made me laugh. Yeah, he kind of got over a little bit fast, but I kind of feel like his character has that kind of mindset where I will deal with this on my own time. Right now, I need to stay sharp and stay concentrated on the actual mission, which is stopping this creature, this person from, you know, killing all the animals and then eventually killing people. So, very good. And then we learn that vampires are... Basically the same. They come from another world. They are different, but they are and close enough to humans that like uh, mixing in marriage is possible. But no, they're just they're straight predators. They always want to. They're always going after you, whether it's you know for pleasure or for hunting. They're always on the lookout. So it was really funny. They had a talk and they're kind of talking about. The werewolf and the vampire talking about, you know, well, what about this myth? And he's like, oh, so you guys will kill people if you're praying? He's like, oh, yeah, we could. But, like, nobody wants to have to go through the penance for two weeks and the daily baths and the, the purification to do that. So anytime somebody starts waving a, a holy symbol or something we think might be a holy symbol, you know, we back off so we don't accidentally kill them because no one wants to go through that. And, you know, it's just funny. They go through and kind of debunk all the myths. And I thought it was a unique way to kind of differentiate and keep it informative without being an info dump because nobody likes reading a big info dump where you just like lay out all your things. So yeah, so let's uh, Dina. They find out that there is a Dahaka and he has a group of stalkers. So Dahaka just comes from another planet. He was assigned to come to Earth. He came to Earth and he's been keeping his stalkers kind of in range and then they killed all the cows and now they're starting to branch out and he they know that if he's left unchecked he would they will come and attack and kill people like regular people and dina of course does not want that that's why she gets involved so it's a good story oh i excuse me i forgot to talk about her grace caldinia she is the one and only resident of the inn and she is renting it for life uh, because the inns are neutral ground and so she is kind of protected there and you don't know exactly what she's done wrong but you know that she's done something quite wrong because anytime we are talking about uh, caldinia she references eating people she's kind of talking about like killing people and poisoning people you can tell that she is like an evil person or was an evil person and now she's just living in this inn drinking her mellow yellow it was so funny and she's always like like likening her hands and stuff to claws and i was like oh that's a little scary there you know that's she is a dangerous person if she would be if she could leave the inn so again just a great story the the mystery and the intrigue of why the dahaka is on earth and why it's attacking who it's attacking it was played out really well it really kind of leads you by the hand of course but that's what the book is doing we're kind of investigating here we don't know anything so i liked it i thought the final battle was really nice one thing that was kind of like okay there's a coincidence bone but i can like deal with it is that dina takes sean the werewolf to the off-planet market through her inn of course of course that's how she can do that to go buy some stuff to prepare for the final battle they buy some anansi pearls which kind of hatch like these little magic spiders that she can control 
and they happen to meet another werewolf, which is totally fine. Not super coincidental since, you know, they're visiting the biggest marketplace in the universe, basically. But he happens to have the armor that they built specifically for the alpha strain of werewolves, and he's willing to give it up for a price of a favor. And so, yeah, it felt a little bit too coincidental there for me. The rest of it was fine. I really enjoyed the book, though. So, obviously, they fight the Dahaka. They kill the Dahaka. We learn that throughout the book that the Dahaka was hired by one of Arlen, the vampire's family, to sabotage this peace treaty deal that they were doing. So, they call him. He comes down. And he's like, why would you ruin this? And, of course, he goes on his spiel about... Oh, you're getting weak. You're making this peace treaty. There won't be any more fights for the rest of us to get honor in. And he's like, you idiot. We were going to do this huge joint operation in just like a year. And you've ruined everything. You've ruined four years of planning. And then they fight and, you know, he gets killed. But the bad guy gets killed. But it's always really good. But I did like that they both... Then the island the vampire leaves and uh, Sean the werewolf also leaves to go you know, kind of find his place to explore the universe that he's just found out exists because he you know wants to. He's never seen it before. And so I like that they both left where they both kind of were expressing interest in her, but it wasn't enough to take over the story. And oh, of course, before I forget, because I just remembered, you know, props to Alona Andrews. For them starting out with a dead dog as the, like, the opening scene of the story. Like, the, you killed it before I got too emotionally invested in it. And I appreciate that. So that I didn't have to feel sad. More sad about the dog dying. Because I still felt sad about it. But I didn't have to feel more sad. So, I also really like that the story of Dina is that she's she is rebuilding this in. Because one day, her parents' inn disappeared. And nobody knows where it went, nobody knows how it went, but the entire inn, all the land around it, just gone. And she spent years searching it, and no news. So to make her way again, she's you know starting up her own inn. Well, she went to an inn location and kind of restarted up the, this inn and going from there. So again, I really liked the book. I felt like the atmosphere was good. You know, you really feel like you're on Earth and not just the same Earth that every other urban fantasy is on. The writing is good. It's not crazy amazing good, but it's great and it's enjoyable and it's simple, so there's nothing to get hung up on. The plot is simple. It's straightforward. It works. The intrigue is there. It's kind of ebbing and flowing. It's pushing and pulling your you're getting some answers, you're getting some more questions, you're getting some answers, you're getting more questions, and I really like that, so, and again, yeah, I just really enjoyed it, and it was a fun, quick read that I got lost in for an hour or two and had a good time, so that's gonna be it, though, that's everything. That's gonna wrap up our discussion of Clean Sweep by Alona Andrews. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Thanks to David Hillowitz for the intro and outro music. If you have any questions, comments, or books I should read, you know, you can email me at libromancypod at gmail.com. You know, I'm putting up a calendar on the website at libromancy.podbean.com, showing what books are coming up next so you can kind of follow along or try and read ahead if you want. And please remember to like and subscribe wherever you get your podcast from. That really helps new people find the podcast and come join and listen as well. So remember to sweep with the magic of books.